My dearest, let's take a look at the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. These verses show when Jesus was tested by Satan in the wilderness. Let's find out how we can resist temptation and remain faithful to God, just like Jesus. The first thing Satan tempts Jesus with is food. Jesus was hungry. No, he was starving. He hasn't eaten anything for 40 days. So Satan tempts Jesus to turn stones, which were everywhere, into bread so he can stop being so hungry. Satan is suggesting that Jesus should make what he needs the most important. Let me say that again. Satan is suggesting that Jesus should make what he needs the most important. Jesus really does need food, but there is something that he needs even more than that, and that is the word of God. Jesus responds by quoting Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus is teaching us that our physical needs are important, but they are not the most important. The most important is our relationship with God and our full obedience to God's Word. Being comfortable, being not uncomfortable, experiencing pleasure, or not experiencing unpleasurable things must not be more important than our love for God and our commitment to God. The second thing Satan tempts Jesus with is testing God. Satan tells Jesus to jump off a cliff and test God, that God would send angels to save him. Satan even quotes the Bible to do this. Psalm chapter 91, verses 11 to 12, to tempt Jesus. For he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus responds by quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus is teaching us not to test God's faithfulness or try to manipulate God. When we are in difficult or uncertain situations, we must trust God with all of our hearts. We must trust that God in his own way, and in his own time, will protect and provide for us. The third thing Satan tempts Jesus with is power 
and control. Before becoming a human being, Jesus was with God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit in heaven. Jesus had all the power and all the control in the entire universe since the beginning and forever. Jesus became a human because Jesus obeyed his Father. Part of becoming a human was to yield his power and his control over all things so that Jesus could do something that would change our lives forever. Satan offers Jesus all of the world if Jesus will worship Satan. Jesus responds, again, by quoting the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. A human being was designed to worship something, someone. We cannot not worship. Some of us spend all of our thoughts, our time, our energy on making money. That's worshiping money. Some of us do that with exercise. We wake up early to go for a run, or we do yoga, then some weightlifting, rock climbing, cycling, and we spend the entire day thinking about and working on becoming healthier, stronger, faster, more flexible. There's nothing wrong with exercise, but if that's the most important thing, then that's worshiping our physical self. Jesus is teaching us that the object of our worship must be our Creator, our Lord, our God. He also teaches us that true power and true authority and true control comes only from God. And when we worship God, we must humble ourselves before God and serve God with a pure heart. How are we tempted in our own lives? Are our physical needs and comfort more important than our relationship with God? Do we try to get power and control more than we try to be humble before God and obedient to God? Do we test God's faithfulness? Do we try to manipulate God so we get what we want? Jesus quoted God's word to resist, block, and push away temptation. God's word is in the heart and mind of Jesus. By reading and meditating on God's word, we can also be like Jesus. We can quote God's word to resist, block, and push away temptation. And when we do that, we can live a life that is faithful and obedient to God. 